Why are Christians celebrating the birth of Christ on a day that he probably wasn't born on with traditions that have nothing to do with him? This is the inquiry that made me hesitant to celebrate Christmas in my adult years. Every time the holiday rolled around, I would feel as if I was on the spiritual level of Daria. Well, you know, minus the misanthropic wit. And before anyone directs me to Inspiring Philosophy's fun reaction videos, think of the story of Jesus' birth for a minute. Mary is told she will give birth as a virgin according to prophecy. She and her husband Joseph travel to Bethlehem, where they take refuge in a grotto stable. Shepherds, watching their flocks, hear the announcement of an angel regarding Jesus' birth. Said shepherds travel to see the miraculous child, the child that would become the long-awaited Messiah, the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. With that in mind, what do decorated trees, gift-giving, Santa Claus, or winter in general have to do with any of that? Now, when it was finally explained to me that these traditions were remnants of pagan winter customs that were appropriated by the church as a form of evangelism, their existence made a lot more sense. Even the best Christian explanations for these traditions border on the absurd. Christmas trees are supposed to represent the tree of life from the Garden of Eden. You know, a tree that supposedly has fruit on it. Gift exchanges can be an expression of God's generosity, but as it is with the celebrating of birthdays in general, it's more an expression of wealth. The date of December 25th was a later calculation on the assumption that prophets are appointed to die on the same day of the year that they were conceived. So if Jesus was crucified around late March, you add nine months to that and you can approximate to late December. Although why shepherds would be out with their flocks in freezing nighttime temperatures, I'm not too sure. Santa Claus is supposedly based on an actual Catholic bishop, but the most recognizable characteristics of Santa have more in common with Odin or Nimrod. The best origins, in my opinion, are the completely fictional accounts of Claus being a human child raised by pagan fairies who is then gifted with immortality because of his devotion to children. Even the movie Klaus on Netflix is a more authentic account of Santa's origins than a kindly bishop. In fact, the more fictional and non-Christian the stories are, the more realistic they seem. Realizing this, the celebration of Christmas just seems silly to me, and I concluded that Christians shouldn't be celebrating it, especially since these traditions work more as a distraction from Christ than a reminder. I remember being a child and how it was like for my pastor dad to stop me and my brother from opening our presents, to go over the scriptures to remind us about the real reason for the season. But as a child, it was all a formality in my mind. All that mattered to me were the presents, and that memory of myself bothers me as an adult. Of course, when I shared these observations with other Christians in the hopes that they would agree with me, I was met with indifference, if not outright ridicule. While my poor argumentation skills can be blamed, at the end of the day, Christmas is still a fun holiday, and it's technically not a sin to celebrate it, especially if your intention is to honor Christ. While I can agree that anything can be used to honor Christ, there are obvious exceptions like animal sacrifices, chanting from spell books, or circumcision. But since modern Christmas traditions are not any of these things, the situation was also very annoying for me. The fact that we call the holiday Christmas, aka Christ Mass, should at least be a red flag for Protestants, but it all falls on deaf ears. So for a while, there was nothing else I could do but sulk. As fun as it would be to get back into the holiday spirit, I didn't want my reason to celebrate Christmas to be, well, everyone else was doing it. Call me picky, but I need a more intellectually consistent reason to celebrate this holiday. And without one, I basically go back into Daria mode. I'm probably channeling her as I make this video. And then it hit me. All those pagans that the traditions were appropriate from. Where are they now? Yeah, there's a spike of neo-paganism today thanks to the internet, but realistically, they are all gone. Either converted to the church or lost to the ages, otherwise known as, well, conquest. The Christmas traditions are relics of the false pagan religions being conquered by Christ and his people, one way or another. Kind of like a theological trophy case. And that's how I can celebrate the season. Not the birth of Christ, but the power of God through Christ conquering the pagan world. Of course, this might be a bit of a cop-out, an excuse to enjoy the absurdity of the holiday and my memories of it. Also, there's something kind of off about a Christian celebrating conquest, especially since most of it relates to a church body that I have no affiliation with and consider illegitimate. But I needed a reason to celebrate. And after all these years, I finally found one, if not a completely technical and autistic one. Granted, re-watching the Christmas cartoons I grew up with will be a surreal experience, like in A Charlie Brown Christmas when Linus gives his nativity quotes, I will scoff, that's not accurate. And yes, I'm still gonna cringe every time a Santa Claus movie revolves around getting people to believe in Santa Claus. 
but I'll finally be able to enjoy myself, intellectually and spiritually. God bless us, everyone. Merry Christian Conquest, everyone, and Happy New Year. Thank you.